Welcome to the video series on how to build your food truck. We're going to do a recap again on the electrical. So in this video, we're going to do a recap of everything that we did on the electrical. When I first started doing this project, which is a 7 by 16 uh, cargo trailer with, that was completely empty and that we converted into a full mobile kitchen on wheels. I did a couple of videos in the beginning about the electrical and uh, based on your comments and based on the emails that I get from you guys, uh, guys and gals, I was like, the common question was, how do I do the electrical? I saw your video and I didn't really capture what you did with that wire there and that one going there. So I wanna break this video to be super, super, super simple on how you can run your own electrical in your food truck and that way you can do it yourself. But at the end, the word of caution like always is if you do not feel capable of doing it, hire someone to do it. Um, but I believe that these videos can help you do that. And we're gonna be using this cool little handy electrical box here that uh, is a electrical box that I took from another project. And I was gonna use like as a show and tell to show you guys. So with that, Frank Baltier is here with a DIY series, how to build your food truck. Thank you for subscribing, subscribe, share the channel. Uh, any comments that you do have on this video, please make sure that you uh, post them in the comments section because somebody else might have that same question and the answer could probably help them as well. So what we did with, with the food truck, with the electrical on this particular uh, setup that we have is you gotta think of it like a house. And on your house, your breaker panel is like the, the main heart, right? The main, the main heart of your house or the main uh, stem because from here, it branches off into other parts of your house being your, your bathroom, your kitchen, your living room, your dining room. This is where the main power comes from with, from your power supplier. For us, it's ComEd. It could be Nipsco if you're in Indiana, wherever it is. This is where the power gets fed to. And it gets fed to these main lugs right here. These main lugs, if you connect both of them with the power, it makes a 240. If you guys can see the copper there and the copper there, they jump around. So half of it is on this side, half of it is on that side. If you're using big equipment, maybe like a pizza oven or, or something that uses 240 volts, then you're gonna connect a double breaker. That's how you get 240 volts. If you're just using 120, then you're just gonna skip one, one and one, one and one. This side over here is your neutral because uh, electricity needs, it's all called alternating, alternating current, which is just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's why it's called AC. So you need the neutral, you need a power or sometimes two, depends on you. And then you gotta add a ground bar right here. This one doesn't have it, but you can add a ground bar. You can buy that separate. I'm gonna link this panel, it's a Siemens panel. This one's just four circuits because that's all you need. Something really, really simple. On my food truck, I have a 30 amp input. That means that my generator is pushing 30 amps to this box. This particular truck that I built here, it can handle 50 amps. And all that means is that the cable that I use, as called the service cable, is bigger. Because you can have a 14 gauge cable like you have here. This is a 14.3. I'm gonna show you guys what this means right now. A 14.3 cable is what you use like in your branches. We call them branches because from here you get your circuits out. What comes out of here is called a home run. Home run is a, it's kind of like in baseball, right? It's like the main thing. So a home run is a circuit that goes from your electrical panel to a destination being an outlet or a switch. And then from there, you can either stop it there, like you can run a home run to here and either you can stop it or continue it. And that's gonna feed your circuit. And your circuit keeps going and going and going. You can go on forever as long as you don't pass the capacity of the breaker. That makes sense. This breaker is 215 amp, 215 amp breakers, which makes 30 amps. And I use eight gauge wire, they call it SO cable, which is for exterior use for your main power, which handles about 50 amps. On my food truck, I have a 10 gauge because I only need 30 amps because every equipment that I have run on my food truck is propane. I love propane equipment because that means that I don't have to carry a big generator around. A big generator typically means more noise and typically means a lot more money. 
Mine's already a thousand bucks of what we paid for ours. It's a Westinghouse, beautiful generator. So let me show you what it is. If you guys saw in the video, originally I used two different types of cables. One's a 14.2 and one's a 14.3. You wanna use 14 gauge because it handles about 15 amps. It can even handle 20. 12 gauge is a little bit of overkill because you're not running like massive equipments like your kitchen. And, and, and I would recommend you use 14 gauge. You can use 12 if you want. Going into 10s and all that doesn't really matter. You're in a food truck. So 14 gauge is what I use. 14.2 means that it just has a color. I don't know if you guys can really see. It just has a color, in this case being the black wire. It has a neutral and then it has the ground. 14.3, all it means is it has a color, two colors, a neutral and a ground. That's basically all it means. That you can do a little bit more with this cable. It costs a little bit more money too, but it's nice to have. I like to use it because let's say something happens with a black wire, you know what, I have, an, I have a backup and I don't have to run a new cable. You don't have to do that. Typically they don't break. Typically they don't break every now and then it happens, but it's like rare, <laughs> like super, super rare. So what I did, let me show you on the 14.2. You can run this whole trailer on 14.2. You take your home run. This is Romex cable. I ran all my wire inside the stainless steel. Why? Because I like the look of it. You can run it on the outside. You can take pipe and come from the knockouts and go out and, and run on the outside. That's fine. Use, it's called EMT. Or you can use what's called armored flex cable, which is like a steel cable, which is wrapped around like a Romex, like a protection. That's fine. I don't like how it looks. It's mostly aesthetics. So what I did is I ran home runs. From here, I'm gonna make, this is where I'm gonna make it super easy and simple. Just worry that from here, you're running home runs. That's all you're doing, home runs. So a home run is a cable, it's gonna go here, and it's gonna go for me. I ran one on this, there's a circuit down here, you don't need to see it, but if you guys want it, there's a circuit down here that I use for my food warmer. That one right there. And I have it specifically for my food warmer because that's my energy vampire, so to speak. That sucks up the most electricity for me. It's about 12 amps. So I run a wire behind the wall and I drop it straight to that outlet. It stops there. And that's one circuit by itself. That's one breaker by itself. The other one, I'm gonna give you guys the super easy way to do it because maybe I overcomplicate it because I kinda, I guess you would say I've done it forever. I've been doing electrical work since high school. What I'm gonna show you guys is do a home run from your panel right here. Run a home run from your panel right here. This is where it's gonna get different than what you guys saw in my videos because I wanna make it easy. Leave a wire right here, run it. Don't even stop at the can. On my other video, I stopped at the can. Run it straight all the way to a main point. Being in this one, we're gonna run it to my switch. I'm gonna run it all the way to my switch because from here, I can distribute anywhere else in the trailer. So I'm gonna run that, that line that you guys saw from the panel straight across, land it in my switch. So it's obviously gonna stick out like that. And from here, what I'm gonna do is take one more wire, being 14-2, and I'm gonna run it to my light. I'm gonna run it to my light, and from that light, so I'm gonna run it right up to the light. And from this light, I'm gonna run from that light to that light, and from this middle light to the next light and to the next light. That's all I'm gonna worry about. I'm gonna show you why. Because a switch, when you bring in your home run, a switch has two screws on there. A switch does not handle a neutral. That's your lights. Lights handle neutrals, not switches. So you're gonna run your home run wire to one of the screws on here. The switch leg that you just ran to your lights that I told you to, they call it a daisy chain, right? Run it to one and then run it to the other, run it to the other, run it to the other. It's gonna go right there. I'm gonna keep it super simple and that's how I'm gonna do it. Because a switch always has power. The reason that the light has power is because you flick the switch on. Now the switch leg has power. That wire that you just daisy chain, that's it right there. And the white wires, they just get nutted up together with the wire nut because they just provide the neutral. There's no neutral wire that goes to a switch. Hopefully that makes sense. 
So we have our switch light going to the switch right there. And then that same home run wire, the color wire is gonna run to the outlets. It's gonna run to the outlets because an outlet always has power. An, out, an outlet always has power unless you make it a switched outlet. And a switch outlet works exactly like a light because you just run the switch light to the outlet which I did over here with my water pump. My water pump is on a switch outlet because I want to turn on the pump when I want to turn on the pump. I don't want it to be on 24 seven. So this switch is for my water pump. And the same thing, it has a, a wire from here to here, a hot wire, and it's tapped off the same home run. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay. And then from here, you can run your switch light. So basically what I'm saying is run a home run to a box. Pick one box, run a home run to it. And then from there, use that same power wire and then run to the other sides. And if you want to make a, a, an outlet that's switched, because maybe you want to run your outside lights or something, like this one's my outside lights, then use it as a switch light. Use the other side of the switch as a switch light. That's basically all it is when it comes to electricity is home runs, switch legs, and that's that's how we run houses. That's literally how we run houses, bathrooms. If you look at your bathroom, it, you have outlets and switches, outlets and switches, outlets and switches. And in a food truck, it's the same concept. It's no different. So this one works my outside lights. Same thing. It has a home run. It has a wire literally right here, back here. It's literally right here, a wire. And then from here, I ran a wire that goes out to one light and out to the other, and that's how I run my lights. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to keep it super, super, super simple because maybe my video complicated a little bit because I was using the other one with the extra wire that I just kind of capped off in there as an extra, which maybe confused a lot of you. So with that, Frank Baltiers with the DIY series, how to build your food truck. And I'm out of breath because I'm talking. <laughs> and uh, thank you for subscribing, for the comments. Any questions that you have, drop them in the comments because that's where I'll answer them a little bit better because somebody else might have the same question. So thank you again. DIY series, How to Build Your Food Truck with Frank Baltieris.